Ever since I first heard about it, I've wanted to cover the story of Ken Edwards, an apparent poisoning victim from Warrington, a large town located in Cheshire, England. This channel is no stranger to tragic poisonings. Previously, I covered the extreme radiation poisoning of Hisachi Ouchi and the DMN poisoning suffered by the victims of Stephen Roy Harper. The poisoning of Ken Edwards, however, is of a different nature entirely. Edwards' poisoning, you see, was not the result of a horrific accident or a murderer's malicious plot, but instead apparently originated from a mysterious source, namely, a mysterious man or creature that Edwards encountered while driving home late one night. The terrifying encounter, which ultimately resulted in tragedy, is as follows. At around 11.30 p.m. on the night of March 17, 1978, 39-year-old Ken Edwards, a service engineer, was making the 15-mile journey home to Warrington after attending a union meeting in Greater Manchester. Edwards was driving down an isolated stretch of road in his van through the district of Risley, home to the United Kingdom Atomic Energy Authority complex. Edwards was driving past the seemingly endless fencing of the lengthy perimeter of this nuclear facility when he spotted something. Initially, he believed he was looking at a man, but soon realized that what he'd spotted couldn't possibly be human. He slowed to a stop and witnessed a strange, bulky, humanoid figure awkwardly descending the embankment adjacent to the facility, seeming to have a considerable amount of trouble making its way down the relatively gentle slope. About 50 feet away from the figure, Edwards watched as it lumbered down the hill with difficulty and began to cross the road, illuminated by his headlights. It walked with arms outstretched and marched stiffly, as if it had no knee joints. One might say it moved like an ambling zombie, or a stereotypical depiction of a Frankenstein's monster. Edwards would later describe the figure as no less than seven feet tall, and said he was clad in a suit made of reflective silver material, like a radiation suit. Its posture, Edwards said, was stooped, with its torso hunched and bent forward. It seemed physically impossible that the figure wasn't falling over while walking in this position, but nonetheless it continued making its way across the road. Edwards also described the figure's face as being round and completely black, or else covered by some sort of mask. The only distinguishable features of the face were two glowing red eyes. The only other notable features Edwards described were the figure's arms, which were thin and attached to its chest rather than its shoulders, like the arms of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Suddenly the figure stopped and turned to face Edwards, who froze with terror. The creature's glowing eyes bore into him, Without warning, two pencil-thin energy beams of white light shot from the creature's eyes directly into Edward's van. Edwards recalled that as soon as he was struck by these beams of light, he was overcome by a sensation of intense dizziness and felt paralyzed by some powerful unseen force. He described the sensation as being like two enormous hands pressing him down with tremendous pressure. A moment later, this sudden and strange paralysis ended, and Edward saw that his fingers were bright pink and throbbing, like he'd suddenly sustained a horrible sunburn. The circuitry of the van's radio was also completely burned out. Looking up, Edward saw that the creature had apparently lost interest in him, and was resuming its journey. It crossed the road and came to the chain-link fence surrounding the fire station opposite the nuclear facility. It raised its fingerless hands and appeared to try and stand upright. Then it somehow simply passed through the fence, as if nothing was in its way at all. It then clambered up the hill next to the fire station and disappeared into the woods beyond. Stunned. 
Edwards remained sat in his van for a time to try and figure out what had happened before finally throwing the van into drive and speeding home, arriving at 12.30 a.m. Ken's wife Barbara at first was livid with him for coming home so late, but soon realized that something was horribly wrong. She was disturbed at how shaken her husband was, and how he was protectively holding his injured hand close to his body. Barbara listened as Ken told her about his encounter with the strange silver man, as he would later dub the creature. Ken and Barbara decided to report the incident to the police, and they drove to the Padgate Police Station, less than two miles from their home. The police were skeptical of Ken's story, but believed he had indeed seen something, owing to how distressed he was. Ken reluctantly agreed to take the officers to the spot where he'd seen the Silver Man. The officers were surprised to meet a team of 20 security guards from the nuclear facility at the spot. When they related the story of Ken's sighting, the guards seemed unsurprised, as if they were familiar with the Silver Man, or at least aware that someone had intruded upon the property that night. The search party found no sign of the creature, nor any indication the fence had been tampered with. The security guards for the facility also refused to explore the forest where Ken had seen the creature vanish. Ken got back home at well after four in the morning and of course suffered a restless night, the first of many. In the following weeks, Ken noticed several oddities. His watch was frozen at 11.45 p.m., presumably the time he was struck by the Silver Man's ocular energy beams. He tried to get it fixed to no avail. His burned-looking hand seemed to be scarring with dark marks, though these eventually faded away. His radio, when he took it in for repair, was found to be too badly damaged to be fixed, its inner circuitry blown apart, apparently from a massive power surge. Police officers and independent investigators returned to the area where Ken encountered the Silver Man to search for clues as to the creature's identity and origins. All they found was an oval-shaped patch of flattened grass atop the embankment the Silver Man had descended, and a dead rabbit with no evident injuries. Poor Ken would have a second encounter with the Silver Man as well. At around midnight on March 23, 1978, Ken joined an investigator from Leeds in walking up the embankment next to the nuclear facility. He was reluctant to go, feeling the same sensations the Silver Man had given him the night he'd first met the strange entity. Once Ken and the investigator reached the top of the hill, they went their separate ways, and that's when Ken saw the Silver Man again, standing in the distance, walking away from him. Ken fled in terror rushing home and leaving the investigator behind. On April 2nd, 1978, Ken would find himself once again at the location of his meeting with the Silver Man. He was driving past the nuclear facility with his wife at around 2 a.m. following a day trip to Yorkshire when he suddenly felt overcome once more by that same paralyzing sensation. Edwards brought his van to a halt the sensation became so intense that he blacked out, and when he came to, he and his wife raced home, and he vowed to never again travel down the road next to the facility. The final strange incident that plagued Edwards, following his Silver Man sighting, occurred on the night of April 12, 1978. Edwards recounted being awoken in the middle of the night by a strange noise like a deep electrical hum that seemed to be filling the house. Edwards checked everywhere for the source of the sound, including outside. The sound increased the second he opened the window, he said, but he could see nothing that could be causing it. Eventually the noise faded, and Edwards returned to bed. A few days later it was discovered that other residents of Risley had heard the hum as well, and upon looking up, saw that it was emanating from a red oval-shaped UFO hovering above in the sky. Researchers also discovered that the same night as Edwards' encounter with the Silver Man, four unidentified youths were said to have witnessed a cigar-shaped craft 
floating over the atomic energy complex. Now, when we connect the dots, we arrive at a fantastic conclusion that the Silver Man was an extraterrestrial being. This would explain his difficulty walking as if he was unaccustomed to Earth's gravity. It would also explain the patch of flattened grass on the hill. Perhaps it was a landing site for the Silver Man's ship. The oval shape made in the grass would definitely match the ovular UFOs witnesses in the area reported. There's also the matter of the dead rabbit with no apparent cause of death. Could it be that it found itself blasted to death by the beams of the Silver Man's eyes? Was the Silver Man some extraterrestrial entity with mental and physical powers beyond our knowledge and comprehension? Powers that could potentially be deadly? It would appear so. Ken Edwards died several months after his encounter with the Silver Man. He began experiencing a loss of energy and severe stomach pains. Doctors found that he had developed kidney cancer. He underwent surgery to remove the cancer, but it spread to his throat and he eventually succumbed to his illness, which appeared so suddenly and so inexplicably. One cannot help but wonder if the strange energy from the Silver Man's eyes was responsible. Perhaps the beams of light had mutated Edward's cells. Of course, whether Ken Edwards really did meet his demise due to his encounter with the Silver Man can never be definitively answered. There are several alternate explanations for the Silver Man sighting besides an alien encounter. One explanation is that Edwards, who'd allegedly been drinking that night, merely believed he'd seen a Silver Man in his drunken state, or else made up the whole encounter as an excuse for why he was late getting home. However, all this is very unlikely considering how traumatized Edwards was after his experience. Another explanation is that Edwards saw a fireman wearing a fire retardant silver suit from the fire station. There was, in fact, a tall, bulky fireman nicknamed Big John, who was known to don such suits in order to scare college students living in a nearby dormitory. But Edwards always maintained that the silver suits from the fire station and the silver radiation suits from the nuclear facility looked nothing like what he'd seen, and that no man could replicate the strange gait of the Silver Man, or his strange powers, for that matter. Whatever Edwards saw, it could be said that the association of the Silver Man with aliens and UFOs might have arisen from public fascination with these kinds of topics in the wake of the release of Steven Spielberg's Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Indeed, the press and UFO enthusiasts swarmed the Edwards home once the police reports of the Silver Man sighting got out. Edwards absolutely loathed the attention further supporting that his encounter was genuine and not something he made up for any sort of attention or gain during a period where aliens loom large in the public consciousness. There have been some other fantastic explanations for the Silver Man besides aliens, such as the idea that strange experiments at the nuclear facility brought an interdimensional being into our world. It's an explanation as good as any, especially considering that with this case, the fantastic explanations, eerily enough, seem to be the most likely. How else can we account for Edward's injured hand, his destroyed radio, and his eventual death from cancer? Unless the nuclear facility itself affected Edwards and his van somehow, or the radio just happened to malfunction the exact second the Silver Man turned to face Edwards, I see no other explanation than the Silver Man and his deadly powers being real, be they from outer space, another dimension, or elsewhere. So what do you think of this case? I'm interested to know since I've found it to be one of the most fascinating cases I've ever read about. If you have any ideas about who the Silver Man was, please leave a comment below. And of course, please spare a thought for Ken Edwards, who died an untimely death, apparently because of his strange encounter. 
Thank you guys. Remember to always stay safe out there, stay spooky, and don't get scared out of sorts.